It is July 4, 2012. The physicists at the Large Hadron Collider, the biggest machine in the world, make an announcement that one of nature's deepest secrets has been discovered. The Higgs boson has been detected and the standard model of particle physics is finally complete. But what exactly is the standard model? The standard model of particle physics is our best theory so far that elegantly envelops our understanding of the fundamental forces and particles that constitute the universe. So think of it like a periodic table, but this time for elementary particles. It tells us how families of elementary particles group together and interact with each other to form larger composite particles and how they further respond to the fundamental forces of nature. The standard model consists of 17 fundamental particles. Let me take you through all of these particles one by one today. My name is Siddharth and you're watching The World of Science. At the quantum level, the particles can be classified into two categories, fermions and bosons. Fermions are the matter-building particles such as electrons and bosons are the force-carrying particles such as photons or obviously the famous Higgs boson. Fermions got the name from the physicist Enrico Fermi and they are a collection of particles that follow the Fermi-Dirac statistics which basically means the particles that follow the Pauli exclusion principle. This principle, formulated by Wolfgang Pauli, states that no two particles with the same quantum properties can occupy the same orbital position or quantum states simultaneously. This is exactly why no two electrons in an atom have the same quantum numbers. If one electron has its spin clockwise, then the other electron must have its spin anticlockwise. The word spin, not to be confused with the actual spinning, is a quantum property that is related to the intrinsic angular momentum of the particle. So fermions are particles with half integer spin and mathematically their spin states can be represented by 1 by 2, 3 by 2, etc. Also the spin states have a particular orientation like upward and downward or clockwise and anticlockwise. An electron has a spin value of 1 by 2 and thus it may exist in two states, 1 by 2 upward and 1 by 2 downward. Since quantum particles show their states only in probabilities, there are chances of these two states coexisting simultaneously. This property is called the superposition principle. This arrangement can be mathematically shown using the bracket notation, such as 1 by 2 upward and 1 by 2 downward. The standard model has 12 fermions and fermions are of two types, leptons and quarks. Leptons are elementary particles that are further divided into six types, electrons, muons and tau, and their neutrino counterparts, electron neutrino, muon neutrino and tau neutrino. They all have a spin value of 1 by 2. The electron, the muon and the tau all are electrically charged and have a sizable mass while the neutrinos are neutral in charge and they have very little mass. Now let's talk about the second type of fermions, quarks. The term quark was coined by Murray Gell-Mann in the 1960s during the formulation of quantum chromodynamics, which is basically a theory that explains how the strongest force in the universe, the strong nuclear force, works. Gell-Mann proposed a new method inspired by Buddha's Eightfold Path to organize all the different sets of new particles being discovered in the 50s and 60s. He arranged the particles based on their quantum properties and proposed a relation between them. He found out that all these heavy particles behave like composite particles, forming various series like octet, doublet, triplet, etc. Components of these particles were named quarks, and they are of six types, or in the language of physicists, six flavors. Up quark, down quark, top quark, bottom quark, strange quark, and charm quark. These quarks were grouped into different pairs, the lighter up and down, the heavier charm and strange, the even heavier top and bottom. And as to why were the name like this is a different mystery altogether. Anyway, let's focus on hadrons. These quarks combine to form composite particles known as hadrons, which also can fall under fermions. But since quarks are the elementary particles in hadrons, we consider quarks and not directly hadrons as the second type of fermions. And if you're asking why, it's because quarks cannot exist individually. They have to bind with other quarks. Now, hadrons can either contain mesons, which is a quark-anti-quark -quark pair, or baryons, which is a group of three quarks. Protons and neutrons are examples of hadrons. Protons are composed of 
two up quarks, one down quark, and neutrons are composed of two down quarks and one up quark. Each quark has charge values in terms of 1 by 3 and 2 by 3. All the upper family quarks such as up, top and charm have 2 by 3 charge. And all the lower family quarks such as bottom, down and strange have 1 by 3 charge. Still confused? Let's count. So a proton has got two up quarks. 2 by 3, sorry, plus 2 by 3, plus 2 by 3 and plus 2 by 3. And one down quark, minus 1 by 3. Sum it up and the net charge that you will get is plus 1. And then in a neutron, two down quarks, minus 1 by 3, minus 1 by 3. And one up quark, plus 2 by 3. Sum it up and the net charge is 0. That is neutral. Each family of particles, that is leptons and quarks, form pairs called generations. Now, the most stable and the least massive particles from the family form the first generation. And because of this stability, meaning they don't decay quickly, all stable matter in the universe are made from first generation elementary particles. Say, protons for example, which is made up of up and down quarks, which are two of the most stable quarks. Now, let's move to the boson part. As mentioned earlier, bosons are force carrier particles. Named after the physicist Satyendranath Bose, these particles follow the Bose-Einstein statistics and they can occupy the same quantum states unlike fermions. Which basically means they don't mind sharing the same quantum states and so they do not follow the Pauli exclusion principle. This unique trait allows them to mediate forces that bind the universe together. There are four fundamental forces at work in the universe the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, the gravitational force and the electromagnetic force. They work over different ranges and have different strengths. Of all the four forces, gravity is the weakest, but it has an infinite range. But so does electromagnetic force and it is many times stronger than gravity. The strong and weak nuclear forces have a very short range and they work at the levels of subatomic particles. The weak force is weaker than the strong force and the electromagnetic force, but it is much stronger than gravity. And the strong force, as the name suggests, is the strongest of them all. According to quantum field theory, a moving charge creates a changing field in its vicinity and moves throughout space and time. Any object that passes through this generated field will feel the effect of the force. This field is the distortion of space-time and the quantization of this field is known as the quanta or the boson of the field. Each fundamental force has its own corresponding boson. The strong nuclear force is carried by gluons. The electromagnetic force is carried by photons. The W and Z bosons are responsible for the weak nuclear force. And although not found yet, the gravitons are supposed to be the corresponding bosons for gravity. By the way, the weak nuclear force is responsible for radioactive decay in materials. When a neutron decays, it gives away a particle called W boson. The W boson then quickly decays into an electron and an anti-neutrino. Now, since the neutron loses a negative charge in form of an electron, it turns into a positively charged proton. There are three types of particles associated with weak nuclear force the W plus, W minus and Z0 bosons. The W plus and W minus bosons are responsible for changing the type of the particles. For example, the previously mentioned neutron to proton and the Z0 bosons are responsible for neutral current interactions where particles interact without changing their types. And now the strong nuclear force that holds the protons and neutrons together in the nucleus and is carried by particles known as gluons. Without gluons, atomic nuclei won't exist. Gluons are the glue that holds the quarks in the protons and neutrons together and are considered in the framework of quantum chromodynamics. In quantum chromodynamics, quarks have something called a color charge, which is just a fancy way of saying that they come in three different types, red, blue and green. And believe me, these colors are not the colors that you see in your eyes. It's just a way to differentiate between different quarks. Scientists. These quarks always combine in such a way that their color charge adds up to neutral or white. 
which means that you will find one red, one blue and one green quark in a proton or neutron, making the combination color neutral. The Higgs boson, sometimes dubbed as the God particle, is the latest addition to the standard model and plays a crucial role in giving mass to other particles through the Higgs mechanism. Discovered in 2012 at CERN's Large Hadron Collider, this was a monumental milestone in particle physics. Now, when it comes to the standard model of particle physics, most people incorrectly assume that it is complete and that there are no more open questions about its validity. While the standard model has withstood many challenges that have been thrown at it by the way of direct detection experiments, there is still a whole slew of questions that are yet to be answered. For instance, it doesn't account for gravity, which is currently explained by general relativity. The standard model does predict that gravity should have a force carrying boson, the hypothetical graviton, but it hasn't been observed yet. This gap in our understanding is at the frontier of modern physics, with researchers seeking a theory of quantum gravity that could unify the forces. And hopefully someday, we will have the theory of everything. Did you like this video? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the world of science. Until next time, stay scientific.